Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venom Man 20 here. And this video is gonna be pretty much completely on the fly. I have been getting the same repetitive five questions on my Black Mamba video just in a row, nonstop. So this video is just to answer those questions. If you're one of my subscribers, you probably already know most of this stuff, you probably don't care. Just skip to the next video. I'm gonna be doing an unboxing here real soon. So sorry about that, but let's go ahead and answer these questions for all the people that's new to my page, because this video is getting huge and it's hard for me to keep up into the comments section, so I'm just gonna go ahead and answer them here. Why do you keep a mamba? It's a great question. The reason I keep mambas, I've been keeping venomous snakes my entire life almost. I keep a lot of extremely rare little tiny brown snakes that no one's ever heard of. If I post this little tiny rare brown snake that you've never heard of, I, it's hard to make a YouTube video around that. I want to raise awareness that this is one of the rare snakes on earth or it's it's very fragile because its environment's crumbling around it or people are approaching on it. We need to raise conservation for this. We need to get captive population numbers up. We need to figure out why they're not breeding in captivity. This is my work. And then I buy a black mamba because this brings a lot of people to my YouTube channel. I love black mambas. They're intelligent. I would love to teach you about black mambas. But I can't do that if I don't have a black mamba very easily. I guess I can point to that picture. That's pretty boring. You're going to get bored. You're going to get bored with this video too, but you know what I mean. Little brown snake, hard to draw attention. Black mamba draws attention, gets fans in, gets people that are like, oh, I want to see his next video. And then we can bring out the little super rare brown snake that I would love to teach you guys about that could really use conservation and some spotlight attention. Uh, next, how did it breathe? How did the little black mamba breathe inside the bin? So it was inside a Rubbermaid bin. These bins are not watertight, and water is 10 times denser than air. So with that being said, if you submerse these, water goes right in. Not only that, in the lid there were little air holes drilled, like there should be in all containers handling animals. In the secondary container, there were air holes all through it. Uh, those bags are very breathable. If you've ever seen like a kidnapping movie or something, they'll throw one of those bags over somebody's head if they weren't breathable, they wouldn't have, you know, Johnny Depth or whoever inside your favorite movie with one of those bags over their head. You cover yourselves up with a blanket at night, you don't asphyxiate, it never happens. I know there's a lot of forms of barrier, but there needs to be. Uh, lastly, on that bag thing, the only reason you would get uncomfortable with that is because mainly the heat that you produce as a human, carbon dioxide, mainly the heat's gonna really bother you, but the snake doesn't produce heat, so therefore he's pretty comfortable inside that bag. He feels secure. Why did I wear shorts? Why would you wear shorts for working with a black mamba? In my opinion, if I let the black mamba get close enough to me to bite my legs, I deserve to be bit. And I know that's a horrible thing to say, but in no point should that snake ever be that close. I have a long hook, it is a short snake, it should never be that close. So with that being said, I keep my distance, we're good. The reason I wear shorts is because I have a nerve issue. I have a neurological issue. Uh, it was caused by the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. If you haven't seen that video, I get it. If I wear pants, it drives me up the wall. So with that being said, the pain involved is gonna take my mind partially off of the snake. I'm already partially distracted by the camera. I really don't need any more distractions at hand. That is not safe. So it's safer for me to just stay away from the snake and wear shorts. Why didn't I just dump the mamba into the clear Rubbermaid container to transport it? That would make sense, right? My quarantine room is a lot smaller than that room. So if you see me take a snake to that room, I have a couple videos up, my King Cobra video, I'm inside that room as well. That's my room I go to if I need a lot of room to work. Cause that's a very big room. Might not look like it on camera, but it is. It's a lot of room to move. My quarantine room's a lot smaller. So with that being said, if I was to pull this snake out and he goes full crazy, I need the room to move around. If I'm inside the tiny room, that's not safe. That's how you get bit. So therefore, I pull him out and I'm testing his temperament. I wanna see, is he gonna come at me? Is he gonna strike a lot? Is he just gonna to try to get away? Is he gonna climb the hook? What's he gonna do? Now, after I've worked him for 10 minutes on the video, now I have a good understanding of what he's gonna do later next time I need to move him. Not only that, Right now he's only three foot, who cares? I could, I could have just dumped him in the other container. I would have been easy. What happens when he's 10 foot? You dump a 10 foot black mamba into another container to clean his cage? That thing is gonna shoot. I mean, it is not gonna be good. It seems like a lot of the people that are watching this video right now don't understand the fact that I have to get inside the cage with these snakes daily. I have to get in there and change out waters. I have to clean up poop, I have to feed them. 
it may be not that one specific individual, but with all the snakes that I work with, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. I shouldn't be allowed to keep venomous snakes, is what it says. Thank you, I guess. Um, the reason I keep venomous snakes, I mean, I have donated some snakes for medical, for the venom to be used in medical research. You know, I think that's a halfway admirable, ab you know what I'm trying to say, whatever the word I can't say, apparently. Um, not only that, uh, there's some species that I breed that no one else breeds very well. You know, a lot of zoos struggle to breed. So with that being said, you know, um, I don't do it all alone. I don't, I'm not sitting here trying to boast. But if I wasn't around doing this, you know, it would be very hard for some zoos to have some animals on display. It just wouldn't happen. At the same time, you know, I feel like my YouTube, I'm bringing a lot, of, I mean, last month alone, I had 3.8 million minutes watched in my videos. I had 600,000 views. I'm reaching people. You know, half the people, let's say 50% don't care. You know, other 40% wasn't actually watching my video. They're just having to scroll past and accidentally clicked on it. There's still 10% of people listening. You know, if I can reach 10% of 600,000, that's pretty cool. You know, maybe I can change your opinion about snakes. You say that they shouldn't be allowed. Statistically, why? There's only one case in the United States that I know of. I mean, I keep really close track of these records. There's only one case in the United States of someone who was bit by someone's pet venomous snake. Now, when that happened, that was in a state that's completely outlawed to own any venomous snakes just like the gun control debate. This is a state that there should never have been a venomous snake to begin with, besides the ones in the wild. You know, uh, the late Dean Repa once said, there are venomous snakes all around us in the wild. I want to put them inside safe locking containers and you're gonna make it against the wall. You really need to worry about what's inside the park, not what's inside my reptile building. Cages under lock and key, the rooms under lock and key, the buildings under lock and key. Got a lot of money invested in this. I don't want anything to get out. If anything gets out, that's pretty crappy. I've never had anything escape. And statistically, we've had these snakes in the country for 50 plus years. And like I said, only one person's been bit by someone else's. Now I know I could get bit. There's definitely a higher risk of me getting bit, but the odds of you getting bit on that side of the camera, highly unlikely. And you're gonna raise the fact that the Burmese pythons and the Everglades uh, there was supposedly research done on the DNA on these snakes showing that the vast majority of them did all come from the same importer, I think it was, that was actually housing these animals. So when it got hit by a hurricane, they all pretty much came to be at the same time. Now, yet again, there was cases in 1970 of like one of the first ones being discovered. So that's questionable. Uh, but back then, they weren't very well regulated. So, I mean, sometimes when the roadside zoos would close down, they would just let animals out. I mean, it was Florida. It was Wild Wild West back then. Nowadays, it is extremely regulated. For me to get within 20 feet of a venomous snake in Florida, I have to have more permits than you do to drive a projectile piece of steel down the highway at 80 miles an hour. You know, I have to go through all sorts of tests. A thousand hours of handling for each species is ridiculous. Or is it genus? I don't know. I don't have that permit in Florida because I don't live in Florida. But anyway, yet again, I live up far enough north that if anything was to get out, I'd never have to worry about it. It'd get out, it would live for half a day and be dead. The amount of individuals that would have to get out to actually start a population within, you know, outside of their range, it wouldn't go well. The snakes native to the area I live are being persecuted left and right. The numbers are on the decline. So with that being said, you're gonna take a snake that isn't native and expect it to live inside a habitat that it's not hmm, very, very unlikely. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna get back to my normal content of handling crazy animals and teaching you some stuff about them. So thanks for sticking in there with me. Uh, show this to anybody that you see having common questions underneath the video. Y'all have a good night.